All right. Welcome back, everybody. I see some people transitioning over. Uh, for those that weren't in Alea's presentation, you missed a lot of good stuff there. Um, so I'm just going to, we just ended a couple of minutes ago. So, so I'm going to give everybody a chance to hop on over here. Um, while we are waiting, I'm just making sure everything's set up here for the end of the day. Um, but don't forget, next conference in person, our fall summit. Um, one thing funny enough that Leia said was to use scarcity, right? So I'm going to use scarcity right now. Again, we only have 50 tickets available total for the summit in the fall. Um, and we only have, we we're already sold out of the super early bird, but we do have a few of the early bird tickets still available. So hop on over to e conference or econf.com. Click on the link to get your tickets for Philadelphia. And uh, we look forward to seeing you there. Um, right after Sarah finishes her talk, we're all just going to hang out here and um, do closing remarks. And then we hope that you guys are going to join us in the sessions in the hangout rooms and hang out for a little bit after the conference and just share some time, talk about what we learned today, talk about things that stood out for you, talk about Expression Engine, talk about whatever's going on in your life, in your business. Uh, just catch up and hang out with each other, and um, then we'll wrap things up for the day. So. I see the numbers growing here. So again, just going to give it a few more minutes. And always, always, always giving our sponsors some love. So Cart Throw Pop Studio, our gold sponsors again. Silver sponsors, Greenline Creative and Triple Nerd Score. Our bronze sponsors, W3 Care and IC360. And of course, Paul and the great team up there in Minneapolis at Creative Arc. Um, friends of EE level. Thank you guys so much for all you do for the community and for helping us put on these great events throughout the year. I can't believe we are almost done. Almost at the end of the day. It has not always gone smoothly today, but it has been great. And I hope you guys have had a good time. I hope you guys have, have learned something. Um, I hope you've shared with each other. And um, we are going to go ahead and get started here. So we have Sarah Arnold Hall. Sarah hails to us from the great country of New Zealand. So we come from across the pond in uh, England this morning um, and then come back to the United States, go east to west coast. Now we're going across the big ocean down below the equator to New Zealand. And I'm excited to hear from Sarah Arnold Hall. I've seen her on Twitter followed a lot of her stuff um, and excited about taking action. So Sarah is a high performance coach who helps people take action and overcome procrastination. So Sarah, I'm going to go ahead and bring you on stage here. Hello. Hello, Sarah. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Yes, I hope you are feeling better. I am. I'm feeling much better. Thank you. Yeah. I wasn't. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Sarah got a touch of the C word uh, last week or over the last couple of weeks. So glad to see you feeling healthy and well. Glad that you could join us today. Um, excited about what you're going to speak about today, taking action. Um, so Sarah, I am going to go ahead and hop off screen and let you mm -hmm. take it away, but I will be listening if you need anything. And then um, I think like we talked about, if you want me to jump on and help out with Q&A or ask people to share their screen or anything, I can definitely help with that as well. Otherwise, I'll see you at the end. So awesome. thank you again, Sarah Arnold Hall. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and share my screen with you. Hopefully this works. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Can you guys? No. Let me do this instead. This is always technology, isn't it? Trying to trying to make it work. I'm sharing. If can you see can you see my I presentation? Cannot see it yet. No. Okay, that's okay. One second. Sorry, everybody. I can go can go to. No, sometimes yeah. Sometimes it, you have to update security settings or. I can do this one instead, and we can do it as a. Oh, there we go. Can 
Is this going to do it? Let's just want to present it. <laughs> oh, here we go. We'll just do it like this. Can you see that? Is everybody, everybody all right? Yeah, that works great. Okay, great. So, oh, awesome. Now I can see where I'm at. Fantastic. Okay, so this is how to take action. And I'm excited to talk to you about this today because this is something super important and close to my heart because for a long time in my life, I didn't know how to take action. Right? There's no class at school that teaches you how to get yourself to do stuff. So you're, we're often taught like what to do. We're taught all of the things we're supposed to, to know that we're supposed to actually do like sports and everything to do with math, science, English, like all of the subjects we're taught to do them, but we're not taught how to get ourselves to want to do them, how to get ourselves to actually pursue them, make them happen, get them from projects and ideas to actually finished and done. And so this is what I do with my clients. I help them take action. And so I'm really excited today to speak with you on that. Um, you are here in the right place if you identify as a procrastinator or a half finisher, or if you're just somebody who, somebody who wants how to take more action. If you make plans, but you don't end up following through with your plans a lot, you kind of put them off. And if you just want to have more discipline and more consistency in your life, then I'm going to teach you today how to do that. So what to, what to expect and do a training at the start. And then there's going to be time for coaching at the end. And so if you want, um, you can type things in the chat or, or you can even screen and I will coach you face to face. So my past, I want to give you like a quick idea, idea of what it's to be like. So you might be able to identify this. I studied psychology and philosophy at university and I left so totally embarrassed that, that I had no skills to overcome procrastination with my mind. I couldn't believe I'd been studying the mind for years at university and didn't do it. Like there wasn't any class to learn that. And I just kind of felt embarrassed when people would ask me that I'd done psychology and yet I was this huge, huge procrastinator. I had what I call action block. And it's kind of like writer's block, but for everything in your life. So you're not just struggling with like, yourself to write, but getting yourself to do anything at all. So I had a million projects. I had blogs. I had podcasts I wanted to start. I started books and I had just a million different ideas for what I wanted to create and do in the world. But none of them really ever got off the ground. Like I might start them for like three days and then get this burst of energy and then it would all drop off and fade away. And that created for me like zero self-trust because I would say I was going to do stuff and then I just wouldn't do it. And that was so, um, it's embarrassing, it's debilitating, and it's really like, it makes you really doubt yourself because you really don't feel like you can, are, are going to do the things that you say you're going to do. So if anybody resonates with this, let me know in the chat. I would love to hear if you also have been a chronic procrastinator in the past, like I was. But since then... I have become a somebody who does what they say they're going to do. I'm, I have so much more discipline now. So to give you an example of what that looks like now, I've blogged for 730 days in a row. So every single day I put out a blog for two years. I meditated every day for 365 days. I did 50 consecutive push-ups. Like I had to work my way up from zero. I couldn't, I had never been able to do even one. And I worked my way up to 50 by, tra by training. Every day. And now I run a full-time coaching practice doing this, helping people take action and overcome procrastination on their goals. So I want to ask you, <clears throat> excuse me, what if you always did what you said you were going to do? How would that change your life? Like, how would your life be different today if you actually followed through on the things, things that you said you do? Think about it for a second, because it could actually completely shift the trajectory of your life. Think about all of those projects that are unfinished, finished, those ideas that you have, all of the stuff at work, all of the stuff at home that you want to be getting done. And you've kind of been saying you're going to do it for a while, but you haven't, haven't been doing it. How would your life change if you actually became someone who always did what you said you're going to do? That's what we're going we're gonna to talk about today. So the problem really is uh, something I'm going to share with you now, but I would love to hear in the comments, if anybody could put in the chat or the Q&A, what is it that stops you from taking action on your goals and projects? 
let me know in the comments, like, what do you think stops you? There's no right or wrong answer. I just want to hear. Some people have said things to me like it's time, for example, that they feel like it stops them. Uh, some people say that they just feel like they're to TikTok. I'm seeing from Josh. Love that. Right. Distraction. Overwhelmed by the amount of things that need to be done. Yes, Carl. Absolutely. Time's a big one for Justin. Yes, exactly. These are all super common responses that I hear. Yeah. Sometimes I hear people say money, not knowing where to start. Oliver, you're so, that's absolutely it. I'm so glad that you guys are sharing these responses because this is going to be so perfect for exactly what we're going to talk about today. So really there are five things that stop us from taking action. Five main reasons why we don't. And you guys are actually hitting on so them in this. They actually all fit into the, these five reasons. Yeah. Not thinking you're going to be able to reach it. Absolutely. Yes. So I'm uh, loving these. The newest idea is the shiniest one. Yes, that's exactly what happened to me, right? I had like, I would have start a blog and then I'd be like, wait, I've got a new idea for a different, different book. And I'm right now I want to, you know, start a different business or I, I would see opportunities everywhere and totally run off to the shiniest one. So I'm so, I'm so with that, Oliver. Yeah. So there are really five reasons that we don't take action. And I have come up with these five reasons based on hundreds of sessions that I've done with my clients of really distilling down what is it that actually stops people. So the first thing that, stop, that stops people with us is confusion. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. There's too many choices. I can't decide. When your brain goes, goes to that place and tells you these thoughts, I don't know what to do. It's going to bring up a feeling of confusion. Somebody said this one before, right? Not knowing where to start. Exactly. I don't know where to start. That is confusion. So this is number one. This is what I see all the time. Feeling confused is going to put a massive stop to you taking action. The second one is overwhelm. And somebody said this too, right? Being overwhelmed with the amount of things that need to be done. There's too much to do. It's too hard. There's never enough time. If your brain is giving you those thoughts, it's likely that you're feeling overwhelmed. And you can, as I go through these, think about which one of these is actually affecting you the most right now. The third one is self-doubt. Who am I to do this? I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. There was also a comment in here about that too. Um, I don't think I'll be able to reach the goal. Exactly. You're doubting your ability to, to actually hit it. So that's, this one is super common as well. And I see this really a lot with my athletes that I work with as well, especially because sometimes they're, sometimes they're going out lofty goals. Um, the fourth one is fear. And you guys are doing so exact. Like, I love what I'm reading in the comments because you're all saying all of these things. Fear of making the wrong choices based on previous negative experiences, Carl says. Absolutely. Exactly. What if I mess it up? What if I fail? What if it all goes wrong? Like, what if I do what I did last time? And we freak out and we don't take action. And then finally, the last one is lethargy. I just don't feel like doing it. I can't be bothered. I'll do it tomorrow. So this Josh was saying with TikTok, right? This is where it comes in. Just not feeling like it. There's something else you would rather be doing. So, so which one share with me in the comments of these five, do you see yourself in the most? And maybe there's more than one. Maybe you experience all of them. But tell me in the comments, which one or in the, in the chat, which one do you feel like? affects you the most. I would love to hear to hear that. I'll just leave you a second to be able to pop it in the chat. Yes. Overwhelm, fear, overwhelm, too many ideas. Yes. Lots of ideas. I'm exactly the same. Action block comes from that. Yes. We're getting some thumbs up on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So overwhelm, fear, big ones for sure. Overwhelm, overwhelm, overwhelm. Okay, everybody's saying overwhelm. Okay, so great. We're hitting it really um, on, on the, we're hitting the nail on the head here. That's so good because today I'm going to show you how to overcome that. Here's the thing. These emotions are really self-fulfilling prophecies. So that means that they become true because we act as if they are already true. So right now, um, you, if you're feeling overwhelmed, you, like the thoughts that are creating the overwhelm are going to 
feel, but they're going to become true because you're thinking them. So I've got some examples, but first, this is my favorite quote to remind myself of all the time. It's actually my own quote. So <laughs> tooting my own horn a little bit, but you don't believe a thought, a thought because true, you believe a thought to make it true. So the reason that I'm sharing this is because when we think about all, think about all of those, all of the things that we've um, come up with, for example, somebody shared before all of us shared, no, I don't know where to start. So when you think that thought, it's not, you don't know where to start. It's that once you start thinking it, that becomes true. And I'm going to show you how. So for example, in this scenario, we've got, there's not enough time. We'll take this one as an example. Then you feel overwhelmed. When you think the thought, there's, there's not enough. You feel a feeling of overwhelm in your body. And that might show up as like a tightness in your chest or like a sickness in your stomach or just like a ring of like energy through your body then you're not going to take action, right? And so because you're avoiding it and you're putting it off, you run you run out of time and you make the thought there's not enough time become true. Like you've actually made, it's not that there wasn't enough time before. I mean, it's possible that there is a time squeeze, right? But thinking the thought there's not enough time only makes that worse, only makes it more likely that you're going to run out, run out of time. Another example is like, what if I fail? What if it's all going to go wrong? Then you feel the feeling of fear. You don't even begin and you don't even give yourself a chance to succeed because you're just thinking, what if I fail? So really the thoughts that we think will become the results that we get. And this is true for almost all of the thoughts that we have in life, but definitely true for these ones that come up around not taking action. So ultimately, getting yourself to follow through on the plans that you say you're going to do and the things you say you're going to do, it comes down to just two things. Um, oh, we're getting more overwhelmed in the chat. Yes, good. Okay, overwhelms it. So it really comes down to just two things to get yourself to take action. You have to plan your actions and you have to plan your emotions. So a lot of people plan their actions, right? A lot of people come up with this, you know, a big plan for it. might have tons of to-do lists. That used to be me. I just had like to-do lists everywhere. But oftentimes we're not as effective as we'd like to be. So I'm going to show you how to actually plan your actions today. But hardly any, anybody plans their emotions, right? Think about it. Like, has anybody planned their emotions before? You can put in the chat if you've like planned to feel a certain way. If you, if you have, I guarantee that it's not happening on a daily basis. Well, Maybe you are, maybe you're an incredible unicorn, in which case I want to hear about you. But for me in the, in the past, I never knew that I needed to plan my emotions because for me, I just thought I'll, I'll, I feel the way I feel. I can't plan my emotions. I don't, I can't, I can't make my feel a certain way, but actually you can. And so this is the key because what's stopping you, all five of those things, confusion, overwhelm, doubt, fear, and lethargy, they're all emotions. They're all because our emotions drive our actions. And so when you plan your emotions and the emotions you want to feel, you can actually shift whether or not you want to take action. So first, this first thing you need to do is you need to plan your actions. And the reason is because you can't possibly follow through with an action if you don't actually have something to follow through on, right? We need a plan to follow through on. You can't become someone who always follows through with what they say they're going to do unless you say you're going to do something. So we want to have a plan for your actions. And for a long time, like I said, like I used to just make lists and lists and replan and come up with whiteboards and ideas and constantly be planning and replanning and planning. I would get stuck in this planning phase. And so a way that I like to overcome that now is I do something that I call best friend calendaring. And basically what that means is I create a calendar of every action that I need to take for achieving a goal or even just across my life. And this is an example of my calendar from a few weeks ago, put on the screen there. I put into my calendar everything, but, and I schedule everything I need to do. But here's what most people do is they schedule everything and then, and then it's super daunting. And we just create like a feeling of massive overwhelm for ourselves because it just, we just don't want to do any of it. So the reason I call this best friend calendaring is because I want you to schedule your calendar and schedule all of the actions you need to take into your calendar like you're scheduling it, scheduling it, or your best friend. 
if you would took a look at your calendar or your to-do list right now, would you hand that to your best friend right now? Would you want them to them to do whatever you're making them do? Or would you want them to do it on the timeline that you're making them do it on? Oftentimes the answer is going to be no. So what you want to do is really put into your calendar. And I have an hour by hour calendar, and I really recommend that you do this, that you put in the actions that you need hour by hour into your calendar. And you can see here that I have made my calendar. Um, um, I'm not sure if you can read, but like, for example, at Thursday at 1 p.m., I've got Watch Ugly Betty, which is a TV show from, from like 2006 that I really enjoy at 1 p.m. on a Thursday because I'm like, that would be so fun after I've done all the pink on my calendar is coaching calls. So I'm thinking I've already done three coaching calls that day. I'm not going to be feeling like doing another one straight after that. I'm going to watch some ugly pity and I allow myself to do that. I put that into my calendar and I plan it like it's for my best friend. All the white space in there is me just like whatever I get this free time for me. But some people even like to schedule that in as well, like full free time, all scheduled in. And the reason that you want to do it hour by hour is the beauty of this calendar is that you never have to feel overwhelmed or guilty or like, in, like so often for me, I would always feel like with my to-do lists that I um, had to look at them and I would feel so guilty that I wasn't doing the next thing on it. Like I couldn't possibly sit down and relax because there was constantly things on my to-do list that I needed to do. And so I just constantly had this feeling of guilt all the time, all the time that I was doing the things on the list. But the beautiful thing is if, if it's Tuesday at 10 a.m., there's nothing I need to do on that, on that calendar. I've got a break there. And it's Tuesday at 10 a.m., how amazing is that, that I can just be there. I don't have a list that I need to look at, to look at because everything else has a time that it is going to get done. And I trust myself to do it because I'm going to teach you how to, how to, man how to manage your own and how to plan for your emotions in a second. So I really recommend create, getting yourself a calendar that's hour by hour and, and scheduling it. it. Sounds like it's going to be overwhelming, but it's actually the opposite because you can look and just only focus on the thing that's right there in front of you, front of you that you need. You also want to plan for possible delays. So sometimes people will tell me, well, I can't calendar like that, like this because my boss will say to me, you know, you need, this needs to be done or my client's suddenly going to call and I don't know when that's going to happen. I can't, what if there's an emergency? Schedule them in plan time for emergencies so that in your day you've got buffer time i know that i'm often going to get a call from my from my mom she often rings me but i don't know when that's going to happen and sometimes we can be on the phone for an hour so i'm going to add time into my day to allow for that in advance you're also going to come up with it, um, and some a list of ex, um, exceptions you don't actually have to write them down but i would recommend it of when you're not going to follow through in advance, because oftentimes when it comes to actually doing the thing, we're like, oh, I can't do it because, you know, this other important thing came up. If you decide in advance all of the reasons or all of the times that you're not going to follow through, then technically you're still following through when you don't follow through. Because, for example, if I have a headache, that's when I know I'm not going to work. I'm going to cancel what I have on. But because I planned to cancel it, I'm still following through with what I said I would do. And so, for example, I put when my friend Nicole, my friend Nicole is pregnant. So she goes into labor. I will not be working. I will be going to to help her. Um, if there's a genuine emergency that I have to call the line for, if I've slept less than four hours a night, if my grandma comes over without notice, I'm not going to turn my grandma down. She's a priority to, priority to me. I will turn whatever else I have down. But these are the things. There's nothing else. Like for at least for this week, that's what I've planned. It, there, if I ha have any come up, I have to do the work because it's not one of the exceptions. And the beautiful thing is you can come up with any exception. If you want the exception to be because because the soup is on or because um, it's, a, it's a sunny day, like you can create whatever exception you want as long as, as, long as you create it of time. So that's why you want to really plan this so that you can trust yourself to follow through with that. The second part of this is to plan your emotions. 
Um, I'm just checking the chat. I might plan a holiday and vacation to feel an emotion. Yes, true, right? We, we plan our actions to feel a certain way too, yes. So the second step is planning your actions because you're gonna have created this amazing calendar and then here's what's gonna happen. You're not gonna wanna do it. You're gonna wanna do none of it. But even with exceptions, you're gonna wanna be like, no, absolutely not, I just don't feel like it today. And you're gonna wanna put it off until later. It's gonna feel like super overwhelming. It's just not gonna feel like something you wanna do right now. So what I want you to do is I want you to expect to feel that way. So often when we create a plan, we think we're just going to feel super motivated and we expect our future selves to just want to do it. I'm not going to try to expect my future self to ever want to do anything that I plan. So number one is I just expect to feel resistant. That way it's part of the plan. This whole thing is going according to plan at 8 a.m. on Tuesday when it says write emails and I don't feel like doing it. Perfect. Exactly. I planned to not feel like it. I planned that I was going to feel overwhelmed. Exactly. I knew I would feel this. Perfect. This is exactly what's supposed to happen. So I'm not thinking that something has gone wrong. Amazing. Yes, this is exactly what was supposed to happen. Everything's going according to plan. I feel super overwhelmed. Amazing. Then I want you to think about what the antidote to the, to the emotions that's stopping you. So I've come up with some example antidotes to the emotions. So for example, confusion would become clarity, overwhelm might, um, might become Self-doubt might be confidence, fear might be certainty, lethargy might be motivation. But you might find a different word for, word for you that is the opposite for, say, um, overwhelm. So let me know in the chat now, what would be the, um, the emotion you would rather feel instead of overwhelm when it comes time to take action on your goals? What is the emotion you would rather feel? The feel? It could be calm. It might be something else. It might be excited. It might be relaxed. It might be de determined. Tell me in the comments, focus. Yes, Oliver, love that. Who else? Um, I'm thinking of other ones that I like to feel. Um, I think motivated is definitely one for me. It's really, it's really strong. Decive. Adrenaline rush. Ooh, I like that. What feeling would create, what emotion would create an adrenaline rush for you? It's like the adre adrenaline rush, the sensation in your body that you feel when you feel a certain emotion. That, that could be like excitement or something would give you an adrenaline rush. Happiness, joy. Yes, confidence, decisiveness, focus. Love it. Okay, so you have the emotion that you now want to feel. So we plan that you're going to feel overwhelmed probably or, or fear or whatever the emotion is that you think you're going to feel. We expect that you're going to feel that. Now we come up with the, the emotion that you want to feel instead. So whichever one it was for you, think about that as we go through. If it's confident, whether it's focused, now you really want to create a list of thoughts and where this is all happening in advance, we're still planning. We want to come up with a list of thoughts that really make you feel that antidote emotion and or this is like antidote thoughts so for for me for me we're confused and i'm thinking i don't know what to do my antidote thought is i know exactly what to do and you don't have to believe any of these thoughts yet i just want you to just want you to come up with what that would make you feel the emotion that you want to feel so focused or decisive decisive or can't what would be the thought that would make you feel that, that would be an antidote to the emotion that you, that you weren't feeling? So we don't want to, we don't want to just be like, um, everything is wonderful. If your, if your, um, thing is about, um, confusion, because it, because it doesn't resolve it. It's not really an antidote. It's just another new thought. We really want the thought to be something that solves it. So for overwhelm, for me, I love the thought. I thought I can handle it. That makes me feel so calm and makes me feel like focused. For self-doubt, I'm the ideal, ideal person. And again, I, you don't have to believe these thoughts yet. I just want you to come up with them. For fear, for me, telling myself, worst case scenario, nothing. Like the, think about the actual worst case scenario that can happen, nothing. That's, that's like, the, actually take it to the end. You know, I'm not going to end up dying from this situation like the worst case scenario really isn't that bad that is a thought that helps me overcome fear and then 
for lethargy if I just don't feel like doing it in that moment. The, a thought that's an antidote to that for me is this can be easy and fun. That makes me feel motivated. But again, none of these thoughts may feel real to you yet, right? They might not feel like you actually believe them at all. Just because you're like, I know exactly what to do, but your brain has been feeding you this entire time. I don't know what to do or I don't know where to start. Then of course it's not going to feel real yet. Or if you're thinking, I can handle anything, but you're actually feeling really overwhelmed that, and you don't believe that thought yet, then that's not, it's not going to work. But what I want you to do is just come up with the thought and I'm going to show you how to believe it in a second. So let me know if there are any thoughts that you've come up with that are antidotes to your emotion. What thoughts would help you feel decisive, Oliver, or feel focused, focused for example? Or Carl, what would make you feel happiness and joy? Um, Justin, what thought would make would make you feel fitent? <laughs> Oliver says, don't panic. Yes, okay, don't panic. I like it. Does that make you feel, feel what was the you wanted to feel? Focus, decisive. Yeah. Yes, amazing. Good. So awesome. Yeah, who else? Who else has a thought that would make them feel the emotion they want to feel? Even if you don't if you don't believe it. Some of my other favorites that I often like to think of is I was born for this. Or um uh, I know exactly what to do. I was born for this. I've got this. I have like um, one of my one of my favorite basketballers ever is Michael Jordan. And sometimes I like to think Michael Jordan would do it. That always makes me feel really motivated. Okay, so once you have come up with a thought or even a list of thoughts, you really want to keep them near your calendar. And, uh, so you've got a plan of exactly what you're going to do. Now you want to keep the antidote thought next to your calendar to remind yourself so that when you go to feel that, um, you, you go to look at your calendar and you feel overwhelmed or you feel confused or any of the other emotions, you're like, great, that's exactly what I was expecting. But now I'm going to think this other thought. But here's the thing. We don't always believe our thoughts straight away, right? If you think, if you've been thinking for so long, oh my gosh, there's so much to do, there's not enough time, and you think, I can handle this, maybe straight away your brain isn't going to believe it. So now I want to talk really about how to believe that thought that you've come up with. You guys might have seen this um, drawing before, but you can see something in this. And I want you to tell me what you see in the like image, like what animal are you seeing in the image? Let me know, you know, in the, Carl says he's seeing a duck. Who else sees something? A duck. All of us is a rabbit. <laughs> duck build rabbit. <laughs> a bunny, a rabbit, a duck, both. Right. So the amazing thing about this that I, that, and the reason that I'm showing you this is that, and if anybody can't see, there is a, there's a, um, a, um, my cursor on the screen, maybe not. Um, there is a, toward, if you look to the left and you see that there's kind of like, there's like two ends uh, going out, that is, can either be the ears for the bunny or it's going to be the mouth for the duck if you can't see both. And watch how your brain can kind of switch in between seeing a bunny and seeing a duck because they are bo both there. And the reason that I share that is because any thought that you have becomes a belief when you have, you have evidence for it. And you can find evidence for any thought you have. If you think that there's a bunny there and you look for that, you can see, see it. If you think there's a duck there, you can look for that and you can see it. It's the same with your life. You can look for all the reasons why there's not enough time, why you're overwhelmed, why why it's never going to work, why, why you don't know where to start. And there will be evidence to tell you all of those thoughts. And that's why your brain believes it right now. On the other side of this, you can also believe the thoughts, you know, that you can handle it, that you know exactly what to do, that um, what were some of the ones, oh yes, you're seeing the ducks. <laughs> People are saying this is disturbing. I agree, it's a, it's a confusing image. Um, so yeah, if you're feeling, um, if you're thinking the thoughts, um, I lost my train of thought, like 
looking through the chat. That's okay. So um, the thought will become a belief when you have evidence for it. And you can have evidence for either of your thoughts. So oh, if you think if you think a thought like, I can handle this, you can also find evidence for why that's true. That's what I was going to say. So you can find evidence for any thought you have. have. Why we have people with such varying beliefs, religious beliefs, political beliefs, all sorts of kind of beliefs around the world, because there's actually evidence, all of the different pieces. It doesn't necessarily mean there's proof, but there is evidence to show there's a re your brain is always looking for if back up what it's thinking. It's confirming all the time. It has a confirmation bias. It's looking for um, evidence to, to things that it's being told. It's kind of like a lawyer. I think about it like your brain is a lawyer in court and it is fighting for you to the jury anything you tell it. If you tell it you're innocent, it's going to fight the jury. It's going to give you all the evidence for why you're innocent. If you tell it it's, you're guilty, guilty, your brain is going to fight to the jury for why that's true. And that is always happening in your mind. So whatever you're telling your brain, it is look for evidence for constantly. If you're telling yourself there's a bunny there, it will look for that evidence. If you're telling yourself there's a duck there, it will look for that evidence. And it's the same with the thoughts that you think. So to, in order to get yourself to really be believe a thought, here's my favorite like trick sentence that you can use on your brain. You get come up with any thought that you want to think. So for example, um, I can handle this. And then you tag it on the end. And here's why. Because your brain is going to be forced to look for evidence. I can handle this and here's why. I handled it last time. It was fine last time. Time. I have information I need. And your brain is going to start to look for all the evidence when you tell yourself, and here's why. Because a lot of um, kind of psychological knowledge out there suggests that a thought is a belief that you think over and over, or that a belief is a thought you think over and over, I should say. Like that you need to do a thousand affirmations in the mirror every morning telling yourself, I got this, I can do this. But telling yourself that over and over and over doesn't work unless you look for evidence for why it's true. And you can believe a thought in an instant when you figure out why that's true, when you find evidence for it. Kind of like how if you didn't see the bunny before, but but I told the bunny there, you only saw the duck. As soon as you saw the evidence for it, or you believe that it was true. So you don't need to remind yourself a thousand, thousand times every morning that you're awesome and you got this. Uh, if you, I mean, you can, I think that's a wonderful thing to do, but you don't need to need to do it. You just look for evidence. You can make a belief happen like immediately in your mind if you look for evidence. And so you did tell yourself, and here's why. That's like the hack of the day. You're going to come up with a thought that you need to think. I can handle this. I can do this. This is easy and fun, fun. And here's why. And you're going to come up with all the reasons why. Okay. So, so in summary, in order to get yourself to take action, you have to do three things. You want to plan your actions on an hour by hour cal calendar if you're planning them for your best friend to do. I really love doing this. My experience, I've not used a to-do list in, in years, literally years. The only kind of lists that I make are like shopping lists or, or packing lists or something. But I never make lists and I never have any other plans. I just have it all on my calendar. And it is so freeing because I can just go to my calendar and when I am do, I'm supposed to be doing the thing, like right now on my calendar is doing this conference, I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to think about anything else. I know it's going to get done. Then you want to create a list of thoughts. Like I actually have a specific list that I keep next to my desk that has all of the thoughts that I want to remind myself to think that are antidotes to the thoughts that usually come up for me. Um, and, and that create the resistant emotions for me, like overwhelm or lethargy. Then you, when that calendar comes up and it says, you know, it's eight o'clock on Tuesday and you got to write the emails, practice finding evidence for that thought that you want to think, the thought that's next to your calendar that says, hey, I can handle this or um, it's going to be easy or worst case scenario, not though, nothing. You look for evidence for why that's true and your brain will start believing that instead and is going to motivate you to take action. You will feel compelled into taking, taking action. So 
I can see that there's some comments in the chat as well, some maybe some questions. But now I would really like, really like to invite, ask any questions that have come up throughout this. Um, and if you want to come on video, I'd be absolutely happy to um, um, coach you live as well. If you have, any, if anybody wants to do that. Um, yes, look at the things you've already achieved, achieved to help gen give generate a shelf belief. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's evidence for looking for all that. You can find evidence in the past, all the things you've already achieved, achieved. You can find evidence in the present. You can find evidence in the future that you know that your future self is going to be successful and you just trust and believe that. You can find evidence of what other people have been able to do the thing. There's so many different ways. Yeah, please feel free to post in the Q&A. Oliver, you're very welcome to come on for live coaching. You're being volunteered if you want to. Love it. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're, you're right. Exactly. The reason that that happens is because of that confirmation bias and because we show up and we take action on whatever thought we th we're thinking. <laughs> All right. My lack of self-belief can be overcome by thinking about what a friend might think about my abilities. Yes, I love that. So that's another example of really great evidence. Like what is my friend going to be thinking about me? Or what does my boss think about me or my partner or my kid? What do they think about me? Who would my past self? What would my child self say about me right now? So good. Yeah, and if you have any questions about how this works or anything that came up throughout that about how to get yourself to actually believe these thoughts or how to come up with a good thought that's helpful, please feel free to put it in the chat. I loved how interactive you guys were. That was really fun. I am not coming on here for coaching, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> totally fair. No, I thought Oliver was coming on. Um, Oliver, I saw you sh shared your uh, video there a second ago. So, um... I've been volunteered. Yes, Oliver, you have been volunteered. Share your audio, share your video. Any other questions for Sarah? In the meantime, that was a fantastic presentation, Sarah. Um, really appreciate that. Really uh, struck close to home, of course. And... Um, I think that's there's a lot of uh, introspective things to look at through that, um, and it's always good to call ourselves out for that. So to under first, I think one of the first steps is understanding. Um, I like how you started with asking those emotions, asking those things, um, because you have to admit it to yourself, right? Like you have to see that in yourself before you can fix it. If you if you just continue to live in denial, you'll never you'll never fix those things. So totally, hundred percent. Thank you. Um, Oliver's saying he's shared his screen, but he's not sure. This video. All right, Oliver, request again for the um, to share your screen because right now I have nothing in the moderation panel, but you were there a second ago. <laughs> Just waiting for Are you approval. procrastinating, Oliver? What's going uh, on? <laughs> I love it. Let me see if something's going on. I'm going to try my other, uh, my laptop sitting over here. Can't click it again. And this has been a day of technical difficulties, so that's fun. Oh, I might come on here twice. Just ignore me. No worries. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Oliver, you might have to refresh. Sorry, bud. <laughs> it's shifting the blame of valid approach. Love it. Awesome. <laughs> I love how interactive everybody is. This has been really fun. Let's see if we can bring it so on. Sarah, how often, so I guess you, you scheduled time for unexpected events mm -hmm. with your calendar. Cause that's one thing that I've always ran into problems with, you know, for years trying to set our calendar up. Oh, there's Oliver, Hi. Um, <laughs> you know, so how do you, so is, do you really like hold yourself to that, that if you have unexpected things that come in, 
that you only handle those in those time spots or do you sometimes, you know, do you fudge and kind of move your calendar events around, but you actually make it happen on your calendar kind of thing? Yeah. So I, the way that I like to think about it is I, I try to do everything exactly when I planned it, because as soon as you start to move things around, that's when your brain is like, oh, it's fine. I'll just move it. No worries. But when you do have some a little time block for like, let's say I leave an hour for my mom to give me a ring, but she doesn't call during that time, I'll do something else. I'll, I'll move something else up into that so that if later she calls, then I can, yeah, I can, I do actually jig around my calendar a little bit in terms of actually how the day ends up being. But the idea is to, is to get yourself to follow through with it as it says on the calendar. Right. So you almost use those blocks could I say it's like a buffer that, and then you can use up that buffer or move that buffer around. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. So it's like, just where are you going to put the buffer in? And if it's buffer time and there's nothing happening, then you may want to move, you want to move something up into that space. You don't want to just do nothing because otherwise you then don't have buffer time for later. You want to move that buffer time. Yeah. That, that's one thing we use in project management is, you know, for a project to prevent scope creep or prevent running over on deadlines, we put a big buffer at the bottom. And then as things take longer, we just use that buffer and move things as yeah. needed or something like that. So, all right, I'll hop back off and uh, <laughs> see how this goes with Oliver. Thank you, Oliver, for volunteering. That's all right, no worries. <laughs> Hi, Oliver. Hello. Nice to connect with you. I saw you okay. commenting a lot in the chat. What came up for you as we were talking? Um, just that I have an awful lot of things like, sometimes my inbox will be huge and, and you know, there'll be numerous jobs from various different clients and they're all wanting stuff at the same time. So you know what do you what do you do first it can just be overwhelming sometimes so um you know knowing what to tackle first can be a, a difficult thing i think that's probably quite common for lots of people yes i like it. i really want to acknowledge how you how you notice that it's the that it's you thinking king that like a lot of different things and priorities it's not actually that the that there's so much to do that that's what's creating the overwhelm Over, overwhelm is all emotion that comes from our brain we often talk about like being in a situation that's like like a high pressure situation or a high stress situation or a really really overwhelming situation but actually it's only overwhelming and and pressureful if we think the thoughts that make it that way someone else can experience that same inbox that you have and be like oh this is a breeze i got this no worries i can handle it right <laughs> so what would you need to think in this situ situation that would that because we can sometimes what we try to do is we try to solve it by by solving the the circumstance by solving the world we try to make our inbox easier or make our clients be different or all of the requests that we have instead of changing what you're thinking about it so what would you need to think about your inbox right now because you're thinking right now there's well tell me the thought you're thinking right now let's start with that what is the thought you're actually thinking right now well my, my solution at the moment is i basically try and switch that overwhelming switch off and I'll just do something because I think, well, something is better than nothing. So I'll, I'll just pick one around. I'll cherry pick them, my favorite one, for example, and I'll just do that. And then that's one thing done, but I, I don't know if that's the best way to do it. Or, or right. Okay. So you do way. have right now, that's a really good example. This thought that you're having, something is better than nothing gets you to actually start and take action, but yeah. it may not solve the whole feeling of overwhelm because in the back of your head, you're like, ah, oh, there's still all this other stuff that needs it's to do. Still yeah. Rare, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what happens if none of it gets done? It gets done. Say that again, sorry. What happens if like, what is the, 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 oh, there's the overwhelm, the overwhelm, but there's like a, at the root of the overwhelm. What, what happens? Like, what are you afraid of happening? Or that's, that's the reason that's creating the sense of overwhelm for you. Um, just the build up of more pressure. The longer you leave it, the, 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 the task gets bigger and more tasks come in and, and I guess the pressure becomes greater. You know, if I was to leave everything for a day, there's another day of pressure hanging in there. Um, right. So it's interesting, right? Right? Because your brain still wants to tell you that it's the pr that the pressure is coming from the the emails, right? You could have three thousand emails to do and still not feel the pressure. Can you can can you wrap? Does that make sense, or does it yeah. feel like no pressure is coming from the outside? Yeah. I, so it's the self imposed pressure. Is that kind of how you? Absolutely. All of our emotions are self imposed. So, because if a monkey looked in your inbox, it would have no feeling of pressure. It'd be like, cool, lots of emails. Amazing. <laughs> or even someone else who doesn't have to do all the work, right? I look in your inbox, I'm like, it's fine. Right. Yeah. 
<laughs> so it's only because you're thinking, oh, if I leave it till tomorrow, it's going to get even bigger. And then, like, and this is creating like the pressure as well. Right. So what would you need to think? How could you think about this situation in, in a way that would actually mean that you could approach your work with no pressure at all and no overwhelm? Would it be applying like a, a weighting to the individual items that need doing and, and sort of not worrying about the 50% that are less important and then just focusing on the most important ones? Yeah, okay. So it's like the, the thought that some of them are not actually that important. So yeah. the the action that you're ta- that you're taking is coming from the like if you if you do apply a weighting, that's coming from a thought, you know what, not all of these are actually urgent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's it. Yeah, just picking out the ones that are I guess causing the most pressure in my own brain. Yeah, sure. Okay. You could done. think the thought like I'm gonna pick the ones. That most urgent or feel the most stressful right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if it's not the biggest one, it might be the smallest one, but it's the one that's the loudest. Yes, it's the loudest. And notice that it's like oh, every email has like a sends out like a message. This one's saying like reply to me, and this me, and this one's oh my gosh, you've this is when you're so late on this, and like they all like every time you read. In fact, everything in our environment is like sending us a message, but it's all coming coming from our own. So. Yes, you can absolutely, you know, um, decide to divvy up your tasks that way. And but we, what we what we really do is to have it coming from a thought that you're going to be able to handle it all, or that it's um, manageable, or that you that actually, you know, what I actually once had a colleague who I I was taking over from her. I was a receptionist at the time, and she had had a million emails in the inbox, and I just got so stressed thinking about them all. And she was like, it's fine. No one's going to die if I don't do this. She was taking her lunch break. I was like, how could you take it? She's like, sorry, no one, it's going to be fine. Like actually what would happen if you didn't do any of this? Like for, for a day. I guess nothing, I guess. Yeah. Uh, unless like, what would was... happen if you didn't do it for a year? I'd be unemployed probably. <laughs> yeah. And then what? And then I would have to find another job. Yeah, the worst case scenario is you find another job, right? Not ideal. We don't, it's not really what you want, but you'd handle it. Yeah, true. Yeah. So all of this pressure that's building up is really this like, oh, my, it like comes down to like a root of like, what's going to happen if I don't do this? You can allow yourself to be like, hey, it's totally fine. It doesn't get done. It doesn't get done. And not because you don't want to get it done, but because that takes the pressure off and then you actually work. Because when you're under pressure, it's we kind of almost use the pressure to like force ourselves to work, but it's a miserable way to do it. You can do it from a different emotion. What would be the emotion that you want to feel while you're working? Um, I think joy and happiness. Um, yeah. That's that's the, the, the most uh, precious one, I think. Love, love that. What would you need to believe about your work in order to feel joy and happiness instead of this pressure? Mm. Um, I was going to say customer satisfaction, but I think probably it's more pride in my own work uh, yeah. more than that. Okay, so you want to feel pride. What thought makes you feel proud of your work? Um, uh, satisfaction with the quality. Um, okay. Like I'm satisfied with what I'm creating? Yeah, being... Um, Please with the result. Yes. Okay. So know that your brain wants to be only happy when you get a certain result. It's like, I'll be happy once I finish this project and it's all perfect. How, what would you need to think now before the project is finished, before the client is happy for you to feel happy while you're doing it? What would you need to think about it? Um, I think, for that, I like to have a clear image in my mind of where I'm going and what my target is, and then I feel like I can draw join the dots between now and there. And that's when I have a clear image, I find that a lot easier to get from A to B. Great. Okay. So your thought is, I have a clear image. Is that true right now about your work? I have a clear image of where I'm going. Um, yeah, I guess it's different for every project, it's different for every every um, item that needs to be done. 
Some yeah. are very clear, some are very easy, but others are very gray and murky. Okay, so the only reason that they're gray and murky is because your brain's looking for evidence for why they're gray and murky, right? <laughs> decided to think, I am so clear, I know exactly what to do on each of these, and here's why. Give me an example for like a gray and murky project that you could, that you can think of mind right now that actually you know exactly what to do on. If you told yourself, I do actually know what to do, and here's why. I think for me, it's probably more technical things. So I can visualize how something will look, but I don't know how to maybe code it or um, you know do the, the technical stuff necessarily in between. But I know, I guess, to solve that, to make it unmurky, would be to hire someone that does know how to do that element of it. Love it. Yeah. You know how to solve the problem. You al I always like to think we've done, even ever done something before, you've done all of the things to do it before. So even if you've never done um, this technical issue, issue, you've done stuff before. You know how to Google it. You, you've probably hired people or connected with people, hired people for something before, right? You've done all of the elements that need to be required to be made up for it. So you can tell yourself, hey, I've done all of this before. I know how to solve this. I know exactly what I'm doing. Yeah, what have you tell yourself that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's. Um... I guess it's coming back to self-belief, isn't it? It's, it's knowing that maybe you don't have to take everything on yourself. You can pull the resource in as and when it's required and, and knowing where to get it. And yes. Yeah. 100%. What are you going to write down as the thought that you want to take away that's going to be the, the one that's going to help you the most from all of the thoughts that you've come up with now? Um, I think as I put in the chat, don't panic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Could you even yeah. come up with one? This is like, don't panic. Like both of those words are like, do not panic. <laughs> what would be a thought that would make you feel really happy and joyful? That's that means the same as don't panic, but makes would maybe evoke it a little more. Um, uh, I'm struggling on that. It's quite tough. Um, Could you think of? an opposite like like if this is like the negative statement could you flip it to the positive statement like what do you want to do if you don't want to panic what do you want to do well stay positive yeah love it you remind yourself of that all the time i'm going to stay positive and here's why here's why all these reasons i have to stay positive it's going to be fine the worst thing that can happen is i'm going to have to get a new job it doesn't even matter it's going to be fine i'll get a new job amazing okay Sounds good. Yes, you got this. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Oliver. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So much. <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Now it's your turn, Andy. It's your turn. <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> I was squirming for you there. So, uh, no, that's <laughs> that's fantastic. I appreciate you all doing that, Oliver. And, and Sarah, sorry. I appreciate you taking the time to do that as well. Thanks, Sarah. A pleasure. It's so nice to meet you both. Um, is it is almost five o'clock though? I do. Um, I wrote that down though. If a monkey looked at my email, what would he think of it? So um, but that's. I mean, that's such a great way to look at things, though, right? Like when you were talking about those emotions come from us. Like that's that's self created. And again, being aware of that kind of stuff, recognizing that um, is is definitely the first step because. Um, yeah, you know, if if somebody else looked at this, would they would they see it through that same negative eye that I see it with, or that same, you know, doom and gloom? The world is on fire. Eye that we're looking at, and uh, most likely the answer is probably not. Um, so. I feel that way when I watch hoarders, and I'm like, ah, oh, they should chuck everything out. What's the problem? Because it doesn't right. mean this stuff has an emotional tie to me. It doesn't mean anything to me. I'm like, just throw it all, right? But they're like, no, you gotta keep it all, <laughs> <laughs> right? Awesome. Well, thank you, Sarah, so much for joining us. And um, if you guys have not looked at it already, I definitely encourage you to check out Sarah's website, sararnoldhall.com, um, where she has lots of great advice. She also has a link to her podcast. So I encourage you guys to check out the podcast. Um, Sarah, how often do you post on that? Because it's pretty regularly. Yeah, I usually do it every week, except this week, one of my exceptions that I made ahead of time, time when All I, right. and I've been sick, so. Okay. 
Yeah, so uh, weekly on her podcast, definitely check her out. Um, I noticed at the top here, um, Alea Harris, I don't know if you got to sit on that, but it was mentioning Try Interact Quiz, and um, she's got her your quiz up there about do you really procrastinate? Yes, and it's so, to tell uh, you which one of the five emotions you most experience. Awesome. So definitely check her site out. Um, I think I posted a link to it earlier in the chat. If not, I'm about to do that again. Again, thank you, Sarah, for wrapping up the conference today. I think it was a great one to end on as we've gone through a day of learning, a day of thoughts, a day of collaboration, a day of new ideas. And now it's time to um, take those, take action on it. Think about all the things you learned today. Think about all the things you've been wanting to do and um, move forward. So um, definitely thank you for joining us from down below the equator in New Zealand. Um, and uh, hope that you'll be able to join us in our future events and be a part of the community. You are more than welcome uh, to join us anytime. You can jump on the Expression Engine Slack and all that kind of stuff or stay up to date with the community. Uh, we'd love to have you keep us in check about our, our emotions mm -hmm. and making sure that we're following through on what we say. So um, thank you so much, awesome. Sarah. Thank you for joining us.